from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues. You really care about a different kind of radio talk program. We are the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. I down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. I haven't talked about this in a while, but it's been so long, I think many of you probably have not heard us talk about it. I mean, that's what happens after you've been doing a radio show for as long as we have. But... Uh, you know, our show has been on now for, well, just on the local station in L.A. alone. It's in its 11th year, and uh, we've been uh, doing this particular version of our show for over 13 years. So there's bound to be things we've discussed over the years. You probably missed them the first time around. And, in fact, uh, I'm sure there are a lot of opinions about this issue because uh, it just doesn't get any better. Here's the thing, I, you know, first of all, as you all know, I live alone, and living alone means I don't have to deal with a lot of the issues that people deal with when they live with somebody else. And I happen to love that. If I am with someone else, if I am dating someone else, what they do at their house is their business. If they want to date other people, their business. They want to spend a certain amount of money on furnishings, their business. If they want to do something tasteless with their home, their problem. And if they want to keep various keepsakes of prior relationships, why should I care? Why should I care? Problem is, uh, I own the house, and if I ever were to get in a relationship where ultimately somebody moved in, decisions would have to be made. I once had a woman who wanted to move in with me. She never did, because I wouldn't allow it. But over the years, she had amassed two collections. One was a collection, and this will give you an idea of, the, of when she grew up, okay? She... She was a child in the 70s, into the 80s, and she kept herself an entire collection of little glass miniature representations of, hold on to your hat, the Smurfs. And over the years, she collected more and more of these to the point where she had bought herself a piece of furniture placed in the corner of her living room, all lit up. Each shelf in this piece of furniture was enclosed by glass and wood, each shelf lit individually. And it was full, and I mean full, of these little glass Smurfs. Bigger ones, smaller and even cuter ones. And before I even agreed to ever move in with her, she told me point blank, if I were ever going to move with you, my Smurfs are coming with me. She also let me know that many of these Smurfs had been gifts from various guys she dated who knew she liked the Smurfs. And so she added them to her collection over the years. And if you ever cared to get into a conversation with her about this... She could tell you which person gave her which Smurfs. 
So in reality, she probably started with a collection of 20 or 30 of these and ended up with a 100 of them. Mostly gifts from other people, primarily boyfriends or her ex-husband or people like that. So that was one thing. She also had a collection of stuffed animals. Now, my experience with women is that women do not buy stuffed animals, ever. Stuffed animals are gifts from guys. They either are gifts that go with a, 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 a bouquet on Valentine's Day or a birthday. There was that day you went to the carnival and he won one for you. In many cases, a big one, maybe a big stuffed tiger or a big stuffed bear or a big stuffed dolphin or whatever. Now, here was the creepy thing. I went to visit this woman's apartment and her bedroom was replete with stuffed animals, all of which were given to her by ex-boyfriends, ex-aspiring ex-boyfriends, ex, the ex-husband. And when I got into her bed with her, the eyes of these stuffed animals were all staring at me as if all of her past was looking at me while I was banging her. Now think about this. Seriously speaking, you're in bed with somebody and the stuffed animals of every guy she ever dated are surrounding you. They're not in a box in the garage. They're not hidden under the bed. She actually told me that these were anthropomorphic beings. Look it up. They all had names and personalities in her mind. And she, that's why she couldn't bear to just stuff them in a box. They had to be sitting on a shelf looking at her. And she looking at them, paying attention to them. Each one had a story and a memory attached. Now, I strongly suspect, although it never got this far because she never moved in anyway, and that was never going to happen, but uh, I'm sure that along with all this other stuff, the Smurfs, the stuffed animals, I'm sure she had that box in the closet, and you know the box I'm talking about. I call it the Museum of Past Relationships. This is a museum with hardcore proof that this woman was hot and in demand. Letters, cards, photographs with memories of vacations she took with other guys. Weekends, she went away and banged away in a hotel room in front of a fireplace somewhere. Mementos like ticket stubs to concerts that meant something to her. Oh, remember that time we went to see Elton John and Billy Joel? I have the stubs right here. Women hang on to this stuff. So on the one hand, they demand monogamy. They demand faithfulness. They demand commitment. They demand engagements, promise rings, engagement rings. They demand marriage. And yet they want to keep evidence of their past where they can see it. It might be stored in a closet wrapped with a little bow, but it's there. And I say, if you're really serious about commitment, it's time to take that stuff out to the curb. Because it's not coming into my house. Another reason why I really should be living alone and should not have people moving into my house. Because I don't need to see the mementos or the memories of the other guys who boned you. And I do not see why, if I am so important to you, and I need to be co totally committed and devoted to you. I do not see why some square footage of my house needs to be devoted to a museum of past guys who laid some pipe with you. 
I just don't get it. But you know what? I know during this hour, I know many women listening to this show right now have the box I'm talking about. Or they've got the stuffed animals. I mean, I know there are some women probably saying, I just don't believe what you're saying. There are women like that. Trust me. More women are like this than not. And they keep the mementos of everything in the past. They do. And how can you be in a committed relationship and insist on keeping this crap around? I have no idea. But women do it. I wouldn't allow it in my house. Would not allow it. If somebody tried moving that into my house, you get one warning. This is leaving my house. And if it doesn't leave my house, it will be set ablaze. It's that simple. And again, another good reason why I should be living alone. Because if you're living in your own place and you're renting your own closet space to hold that stuff, or you are uh, paying for your own living room space to put the Smurfs up there or whatever, then it's none of my business. But if you were to move into my place, that stuff goes. Do you think I'm being unreasonable here? Like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. And she got called out on being a listener of yours the other night. Love it. She's at a bar, and this girl comes up to me, starts talking to her. She goes, once you want to buy me a drink? She goes, sweetie, I never buy a girl a drink until I bang her. She goes, you're a Tom Likas listener, aren't you? I go, yes, sir. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. At one 800 800 tom that is our telephone number, Margaret, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Do you care, Margaret? I, I do care. You know what? I absolutely adore you, and I know you hear that every single day, but my heart is, like, racing right now, and I don't get nervous. So I just... That Here we you. are. It's you and me now. <laughs> well, I was actually calling in response to what you're talking about. I think women that do that, it has a lot to do with their self-esteem. I think they need validation that once upon a time they were desirable or that they are desirable just in case things don't work out with their current relationship. It's kind of like a year, like a, a, a scrapbook kind of. But, but there's just, something wrong with a woman who needs that kind of validation. You see, if I've chosen you and you move into my house, how much more validation do you need? Well, that's and my, if you that's, do need totally more agree. validation, you are effed up and you need to get out of my house. No, oh, completely. Well, that's, a, that's the thing. Back when I, a few years ago, I mean, my self-esteem was a little bit less than it is now. So I did keep a lot of things. And then it got to the point where I had cha- I'd gone through some changes and I was going through all my stuff. And I'm like, I really like this, but it's a closed chapter in my life and I don't really need it anymore. It's just clutter. Um, that's the first thing. And also, yeah, I agree. When you are actually moving into someone else's house, you kind of start over. I mean, it's one of those things where you're not even expected to bring, you know, blankets, furniture. It's you're moving into someone else's house. And a lot of these women think that they're entitled to bring it with them because they're starting, you know, they're bringing their their end, their side with you, and you're kind of merging. But at the same time, you're merging together. It's like a whole different entity, you know. So I think that women that do actually, I agree. I think there's totally totally something wrong and it has a lot to do with having a low self-esteem and needing reassurance that they are you know desirable and it's it's horrible and it's for the woman to expect you to welcome all these you know little trinkets into your house number one you're a guy i mean come on are you are you serious i mean number one the woman uh, number two the woman's probably old enough to where she doesn't need stuffed animals i don't remember the last time i had a stuffed animal and i'm 28 well a lot of women do let me tell you yeah, well, they don't need it, but I I agree with, I, I mean, I hate to say this, but I agree with everything you say, right down from the littlest thing. thing. I mean, I've been, my, I have a guy friend that I've been quote unquote friends with for about a year and a half now, and he and I have a better relationship than any married or couple that I have ever met in my entire life. It just works, you know, and if he ever said, I want to bring this into your house, if I didn't want it, I'd say no, and he would be like, okay, I get it, you know. But I wouldn't even ask him to bring any of my stuff, with exception yeah. of my little puppy. But, <laughs> <laughs> but he likes the dog, so. <laughs> yeah, well, you're lucky with that, dear. Yes, yes, yes. So I just wanted to respond to that and say I completely agree, and there is something seriously, uh, you know, not seriously wrong, but, you know, up in the up in the head that's a little bit a little bit off, you know. So. Yeah. Well, I that's what I think, and that's how I'm going to treat it.
Well, you as you should, as you definitely should. You're you're a very wise man. <laughs> well, thank you for that. And I'm glad I finally got to speak with you because I've been listening. My guy friend turned me on to you like maybe three months ago, and you are on my my station. 97.1 is on my station all hours, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Whenever I turn on my car, forget it. It's you're always on. So I want to say I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> appreciate the call. All right. Have a good day. night, you, Tom. All right. You too. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Justin on the Tom Like a Show. Hello. Tom, how are you? Great. Um, first off, I have a question about this, but I was wondering if you'd heard anything about the uh, the woman from New York who was looking after the looking for the high rolling guys who, in response to a posting on Craigslist, the guy. Yeah, we did a whole show about her. it. We did a whole show about it. Oh, I remember, but did, do you know what happened about her? No, uh, the uh, we don't know her identity. It never came out. Okay, but my question is. I've I've been with my girlfriend for about seven months, and I don't know if we're getting serious or not. But she she's 23, and she was engaged, but the guy cheated on her with multiple partners throughout the U.S. And she still got the engagement ring. How can I look like? Well, a first guy? of all, I don't know how new you are to the show. I know you're calling from Boise, Idaho, so you're probably new to the show. I, are you aware of 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 my opinion of having a girlfriend at age 20? Um, you're against it. Correct. Yeah. But how do I go about telling her that we should pawn it versus not? Uh, well, if you insist on having a girlfriend, although I don't recommend it, uh, you've got to be a man step up to the plate, point blank. That's not going to be in your house. Yeah. Okay. I just don't want to look like a bad guy to her. But. Stop worrying about looking like a bad guy. That's one of the reasons I tell you at 20, you're too young to have a relationship. Uh, yeah. Women don't respect you unless you are the bad guy. Unless you're uh, the bad guy. It, it's just that that's, she showed it to me, and it's in this little velvet-covered box. And I'm a bad guy, and women love me for it. I know, dude. You, you get more chicks than anyone I've ever known. Right, so man. maybe you need to take a page out of my book, son. Do you have a book? Where can I buy it? Uh, you're hearing it right now. <laughs> All right. And I can... You you have your your radio show posted online on your website? Well, you're, you have a, do you have a radio? Yeah, but you're Try not tuning on. in. Well, we're on when we're on, but uh, sh there are podcasts, there's live streaming on the internet. Believe me, this show is available any number of ways. Yeah. All right, thank you. But sir. the bottom line here is you have to be a man, and that means you've got to be a bad guy. Yeah. Stop worrying about not being a good guy. Okay. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. You know he's not going to do anything of the kind. Let us say hello here to Helen on the Tom Likas show. Hi. Hi. How are you, Tom? Great. Good. Good to hear it. I just wanted to put my two cents in. The first caller that you had on the subject, she's absolutely right. Sometimes it is validation, but, you know, you need to get over it. And the only pictures I keep are prom pictures that kind of stuff and that's just to, you know because it's like things you do in your life but other than the personal pictures when you're out my ex-husband and you're out um on vacations and whatnot those pictures need to go no you know, doubt about it yeah so all the professional pictures you know proms that kind of milestone in your life keep it just as part of high school it's part of your life and that's you know you just grow on it you look back and and that kind of stuff, but but the memory parts, the vacations and all that, that's got to go because who wants to look at you know somebody else? I I didn't say I got rid of mine because I like to look at the picture because I'm in the picture, but I haven't got rid of a lot of my stuff, but I don't pull it out to show him either. My new husband, I don't pull all that out to show. Him. Why do you have it? Because I'm in the pictures. Yeah, but that's it's not the memory. point. That's not the it's point. Not, it's, not a it's not the memories of me and that guy. It's just memories of me and what I did in my life. 
I could care less who was in the picture with me. That's picture yeah, me. but but he's gonna care. That's why I don't pull it out and show him. <laughs> Those are there. pictures for me. What, and what happens when he goes through your closet or he's cleaning up or whatever he's doing and he finds that box? Oh, then he finds it. But it's not really a box. It's just, you know, part of my pictures and stuff. But, again, I don't flaunt them in front of anybody. And they're just for me. And eventually I probably will throw them away. What are you waiting for? Um, <laughs> spring cleaning day, I guess. You know you could do this right now. Yeah, I could. But you won't. Yeah, I will. I will, because I am, like the, again, like the first caller said, it's a lot of clutter. I mean, if you have it embedded in your mind, it's there. You don't really need a picture. You know what you did throughout your years. Well, um, I know you say that, but a lot of women uh, know what they did over the years. They keep that box anyway, as you know. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here is Alfie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Great. Uh, well, the story you're saying just happened to me about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, cleaning through the garage, found a box of old love letters and some pictures. So how did you react? What did you do? Well, I haven't told her anything yet. The box is still there. I'm planning a uh, nice way of responding to it, so that's why I called you up. Great subject. Well, uh, thank you for that. We've been, married, we've been married for a year now. I have no idea. You have no idea what to do? No, I have no idea. She has these things. I mean, we've been married for a year. So what do you plan to do? Well, that's why I called you. What do you think I should do? How do you feel about it? Do you like that being in your house? Oh, I don't. Well, then you have to tell her. Should I just tell her or should I just burn it or have like a barbecue and just show her that it's burning or something. I don't know. I want to do it in a... Well, in a I, I don't be a drama queen about it. I mean, if you want to dispose of it and just say it disappeared, I don't know if that's ethical to take somebody else's property because, honestly, I like confronting these issues. If it were me, I wouldn't burn it. If it were me, I'd go up to her and say, what's this doing in my house? I see. But um, that's certainly an option to just simply burn it. But if you burn it... And then you tell her you burned it, you're going to have more trouble than you need. It would be just easier for that box to get completely lost. You would say you lost it when you were moving or who knows where it went or you don't know it. You didn't know the box existed, so you know nothing about it. You could do that. But that wouldn't be my style. I guess I'll just confront her, I guess. I mean, who or knows? She may have forgotten it and she may happily get rid of it. But if she starts fighting you about it, this is going to tell you something you need to know. Exactly. Uh, I wish I had listened to you earlier. I wouldn't get married at age 25. But Of course you wouldn't. You wouldn't get married at any age. Exactly. All right, Tom, can you take me out of African tribal style? African tribal style, here you go. Baninge, 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 so penza. Baninge. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Uh, let's see if we can pick up line three and say hello to Christina on the Tom Likas show. Hello? Yes. Hi, um, this is Christina. I just said that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I wanted to make a comment on that box that you mentioned in the closet. I just wanted to say that um, I did actually have an album just like that, Memories. And as soon as I met my current husband, we've been married for a year now, that was out in the trash. So it's true, girls do have that. And um, I, as soon as I met the one, it was out in the trash. So I think um, if you're if you're seriously in love with that person and know that that's the person for you, everything else you can just toss away. Did you do that? Oh, yes, definitely. The first month that I met him, it was gone because he proposed after a month and a half. So it was just, and we're married, and now we have a baby, a brand new baby. So we're definitely happy, and I think it's because of the steps that I took and the way that my my whole past, you know, is clear to him and everything. So it, I think that's the way that 
the old relationship could work if it's honest and if your heart is in it, then I think it'll you give it a hundred percent. So you think that box has to go? Oh, definitely. That needs to go in the trash. <laughs> Hang on a second. Let me get Carrie on the air. Uh, Carrie, you don't agree with Christina. Why not? I just don't. I think that what happens to your life is it's kind of like keeping a photo album. And as long as those feelings don't go into your relationship, what's wrong with having a box of mementos that's in a garage that you don't look at? Well, what's what's the point of having it if it's not in your life and it's, if it's out of your heart? What's the point yeah. of holding on to it if it could hurt the person that's in your, in your present life right now? What, but that's the point. I think that if you have a, a, a mature relationship, that it shouldn't hurt them. I mean, people have relationships that are gone and over. You can't take an eraser and erase what's been in your heart, and it's part of your life. It's part of So life. as a man, if you I are. choose to keep the kind of mementos that men like to keep, if I choose to keep naked photos of hot chicks from my past, you'd be okay with that, dear? I absolutely would. My really? Deceased, naked my, photos my, of ex-girlfriends, ex-wives, you, you would have no problem with it. My deceased husband had, he traveled extensively, and he was in Europe, and as I know that you're a world traveler, and he had photos of his ex-girlfriends that were walking t uh, topless on the beach and whatnot. And you know what? That was part of his life. No, no, I'm not talking about people who walk topless on the beach. I'm talking about pictures I took in the bedroom. Women up on well, my stripper you know, pole. That's, that's, you would have no problem with that, right? Well, you know, as long as they didn't come into my world, no, I wouldn't have a problem. Well, they're in your world. There's a box in your house with those pictures. They're in the garage. And maybe once in a while when you're out of town, I go to that box with a sweat sock and a, exactly. uh, and a <laughs> well, back massager. What? That's, that's what has, yeah, but it, that's the same thing. as uh, To me, that's the same thing as looking at a Playboy. And you know what? But it's not that's because what? these are women who I've had sex with, unlike the women in Playboy. Well, you know what, though? If he wants to reminisce, let him reminisce. As long as he's not doing it in person, what do I care? Christina, how would you feel about that? I think that I think she would actually be disturbed by that if it actually happened because she's just thinking of it if if it were to happen, you know, but if it actually happens in your home, you definitely would be bothered by it. And the men, they wouldn't appreciate you having a box of memories or stubs from movies or what places you've gone. I I definitely think they they wouldn't they wouldn't appreciate you having that because if you're in a relationship, you need to maintain and be in that relationship. You you don't need to worry about what you did in the past or or the memories that you had. You need to be out of your mind and out of your heart. That's of course you had those feelings, but those need to be gone because you have a relationship. You need to focus on that. And and I appreciate your the difference of opinion, but I'm telling you that my late husband uh -huh. had pictures of his ex-girlfriends that were actually in the house, not in the garage. They were in boxes, and they were put away, but they were in the house. And I had no problem with it because that was part of his history, which made him be the person that I fell in love with and I had a relationship with. Mm -hmm. And for me, it just means that that was a part of his history. And I would, if he looked at me and said, oh, why are you keeping this card from your first love at high school? Well, because that was a part of what made me be who I am today. Do I mm -hmm. love that man? No. Do I, it, it, I don't even, I, I look back at him with fondness. But mm -hmm. even, I've seen him at reunions and whatnot. Why are you looking back at him at all if you love your husband so much? <laughs> Well, number one, he's my late husband. But number two, like I said, they're just a part of my life. It's just Yes, like but when I you have a husband, he doesn't want you looking back with fondness on other people. You don't look back at anybody in your life, your ex-wife, with fondness? Actually, I, I have moved on. That part of my life is over. I know. But what I'm asking you is if you think... I'd be more likely people, to look at naked pictures of chicks I'd gotten it on with in the past. <laughs> well, see, but... But my point, and, and, and we're going to have to agree to disagree on this. My point is, is not that I'm looking at them going, oh, I'm pining for them. But I look back at that period of my life with fondness because I would rather have fondness for that than hatred for that. It takes a whole lot. Well, uh, my attitude about it would be then make your own mortgage payments and use as much of your square footage as you like as your little and museum of fondness for people you used to be involved with. Well, you know, those those things live in your head and make you the person they are, but 
they shouldn't have to be in your house for you to remember who you've been with or what that person did to make you who you are. That should be in your in your mind, and that made you who you are, and that's it. That's your past. It and shouldn't they are. be living they are. in your but, house. Like I said, but, for, but there's a part of me that says, you know what, you know, there's a couple little trinkets. It's not like I have them displayed all over the house. Mm-hmm. Just that there's something in a box in the garage. Yeah. And you know what? Guess, when I'm, when I'm 90 years old, be... if I can still see, that's right. something fondly that I can look back at. It has nothing to do with love for my late husband or for somebody that's right. going to be in my future. No, I guess it's just the point of considering others' feelings or thinking that my And, actually, if, it had bo- and if it had somebody, bothered but, him, right. if it had bothered him, I would have said, you know what, fine. And I don't know no. that I would have destroyed it, but I certainly wouldn't have kept it in our home. I just think rather than it coming to that point of it might bother someone or having someone say you should throw it out, I would just do that before anything because I know that nobody would want to even question or say that. So that I'd rather just throw it out and have it not be an issue and just live happy with the person I'm with and be content. That's it. You don't okay. Have to- All right, Carrie and Christina, I'm running out of time here. I-, I thank you for the call. When I come back, I'm going to tell you a personal story about me. Because I didn't just have to compete with a box full of cards and letters. I had to compete with something really outrageous. And I'll tell you what it is as we continue. Tom Lankis. 1-800-5800-TOM. What was that again? Were you not listening to me, sir? I couldn't hear a word you were saying. Well, I couldn't hear a word that you were saying either. I see. That's great. I like the level of discourse here. It's fantastic. It's the Tom Lankis Show. It's... The Tom Likas Show from Hollywood at 1-800-5800-TOM. We are talking about that box of memories that women keep in the closet or in the garage or the stuffed animals or the other mementos of previous relationships. Christine, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hey, baby. Hey. Am I speaking with one 800 Five eight hundred Tom. You are indeed. Good deal. Hey, you know what? I want to thank you for your simple logic and appreciated advice. I'm here to help, darling. You know what? God bless. Oh, wait, wait, why, why? Yeah, we're on the air, dear. Okay, uh, we need to burn that stuff. And uh, I just appreciate you've got simple logic that's pure. And girls and guys alike need to let go. Or uh, stop pushing the guy you're with now for a monogamous commitment. Because as uh, far as I'm concerned, I'm competing with that box. There you go. There you go. It's all about move forward. I mean, are we going to spend our life looking backwards? Or are we going to move forward? And and if you expect me to pay your rent or your mortgage. Maybe I own my house and the land it sits on. Wow. I like and, it. Uh, that doesn't, doesn't make me all powerful. That just means I need to quit looking backwards also. I got too much clutter and it's time to move forward. That's right. And I appreciate your advice. I'm taking it to heart. Thank you, darling. I got Wait. way too much clutter and thank you. I appreciate the call. Okay. 1-800-5800-TOM. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate your voice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to help, dear. You got it. Thank you. All right. There goes Christine on line one. We move on here at 1-800-5800-TOM. Let's say hello here to, ooh, let's see, Eric on the Tom Like His Show on line eight. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's going on? Not much. Well, I've had a run-in with this uh, issue. Uh, you know, I've went against pretty much everything you said about, uh, you know, i got been with the same chick for a long time. I have two kids and everything. But before all that, you know, I bought my own house and everything. But I, for a hobby, I train dogs. And when when my uh, wife now moved in, she brought all these stuffed animals. I hate these stuffed animals, but I did. So I trained my red healer to attack them. Uh, because, you know, I trained her to... Attack dogs. stuffed animals? Really? <laughs> Eat the stuffing out of them. Like, say, like, we were going somewhere. She would, the dog would never do it unless it was... Because it was by command. 
So, you know, we'd leave the house. I'd be like, oh, I forgot my cell phone. And I would go back upstairs, and I'd throw some on the ground, and I'd tell my dog to attack these stuffed animals. And, well, in about a week, they were all gone, every one of them. <laughs> I didn't have to worry about the clutter on my bed or laying next to whoever's love bear. I, I just couldn't handle it. Holy cow, really? Yeah, they really got You know, it wasn't so much who gave it to them. It was just that it was cluttered on my bed. It was all over my bed. It, you know, you walk into my room, and there was, you know, stuffed animals that just didn't need to be that big. You know, they were as big as a human being. Who needs a stuffed animal that's six foot tall? Oh, I totally agree with you. I, th I think that's just asinine. And, you know, I, I agree with everything you say. And, you know, um, you know, there's an exception. I have a really good girl, but... You know, guys just need to grow some cojones, you know? I, I mean, I lay down the law, and I feel it's disrespectful to have that, that, that box and those books in my house because I'm not – just like you said, I'm not competing with, the, with whatever's in that box or whatever's written in that planner, and I think it's disrespectful. And, you know, my little fence thin area, you know, there's, you know, highly respected. So That's outrageous stuff. <laughs> is, that, is that insane that I got my dog to attack stuffed animals? <laughs> well, I think that's uh, clever, uh, no doubt about it. Uh, but, but you know, uh, my attitude about it is I paid for all the square footage of my house, whether I'm renting, owning, whatever. It's mine. If you move into my house, I'm going to decide how the property is used. Yes. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Yes, 100%. That's a... Uh... Well, I call it my fenced-in area. You know, I have about 15 acres in a, of, of a 3,100-square-foot house, and it's mine. It's in my name, you know, and, and you know, she's a guest. You know, I'm, I'm, at this time, we're common law married, but, I mean, I've never married her because I feel it's a piece of paper, and, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not a religious person at all. I, I, you know, I don't, I don't feel that little piece of paper, but, you know, I... I I, I, I laid it down, Tom. I laid it down before she moved into the house. I said, this is what it's going to be like. This is what's going to happen. And and she's respected it so far, you know. And I've had to give her the, the warning that, you know, she's not, you know, on the same page, then I can do it by myself, you know. I can do all that by myself. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate the call. I really do. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Let's go to Dan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Dan. How are you doing tonight? Do you care? Man, I totally care. I, I consider you as more than a father. Hey, 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 we can't say that word on the air, much as I'd like to. Oh, sorry, buddy. I didn't know. Anyways, um, I just wanted to uh, say thank you first and foremost for all the advice you've given me. Um, I am now single, 24, and having a great time. And uh, I guess what we're talking about is this, uh, formalities aside, I don't know. I mean, I have a whole bunch of, like, journals that I've kept, you know, pictures of girlfriends and whatnot. If I got married, I don't think I'd want to get rid of my journals and all that stuff either. So I don't want to hold the double standard, and I don't know. I, I just don't think that as long as it's out of the way, that it would be that big of a deal. Well, uh, you do whatever you feel comfortable with. But i got to tell you something. I, I had to compete with something. That was really outrageous. I was involved with somebody at one time who had a boyfriend, in fact, I think a fiancé, who had been murdered. Murdered. Okay? Uh, how do you compete with that? This was the love of her life, and he, he was gunned down right in front of her. I didn't find this out until after we were living together. So in her collection, we not only had the cards and the letters, uh, we had the... The, the shirt he used to like to wear that she would wear to feel closer to him. We had the keychain he used to carry that she got him as a gift that she got back. We had every little item. And I am having to compete with the memory of a guy who got gunned down. Can you imagine that? So, of course, I was the big, mean bastard who said, you know what? I can't compete with a dead guy. I can't do it. And so I don't. Our email address is tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.